सो हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू आवर जाओ स्क्रिप्ट सीरीज सो इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर डाइविंग डीप इन टू अ फंडामेंटल टॉपिक ऑफ जाओ स्क्रिप्ट प्रोटोटाइप ओके सो अंडरस्टैंडिंग प्रोटोटाइप इज़ वेरी क्रूशियल फॉर मास्टरिंग जाओ स्क्रिप्ट ऑब्जेक्ट ओरियंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग गाइज सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट इट ओके सो दीज आर ऑल द टॉपिक्स आई हैव रिटर्न हियर वट वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इन टूडेज वीडियो ओके सो फर्स्ट थिंग फर्स्ट what is prototype in javascript right this is very important topic guys uh, many advanced javascript developers don't understand what is prototype how prototype inheritance works right what are the use cases of it and many other things right so first thing first like in every object every object in javascript has a prototype okay every object in javascript has a prototype let me explain you this so i have created one index.js file one index.html file here i have simply attached my javascript file and let me create one object right uh, if i'll create one object so i'm not going to focus on uh, uh, theory mostly i will be covering practical part so that you can understand it easily okay so let's say i have created this object right and let me simply console it let me run this application with live server and let me inspect it you will see we have a object right with name and age uh, uh, property of that user object okay you can see here and here we have a prototype so that's what i was talking about like every object in javascript has prototype okay which is essentially a reference to another object right and what it is referring to it is referring referring to a another object that means every object in javascript we have prototype and that prototype is again referring to a another object and that can contains certain function certain functionality like we have two string value constructor function here right so these are all the properties so let's not focus on definition let me tell you the real use case of it right like it is used for inheritance mostly right like uh, if i'll give you one simple example so let's say i have a object here parent where it is simply a uh, parent name is xyz uh, abc okay and then address is basically uh, let's say this is the address right uh uk india something like this or maybe yeah this is something like this and i want to create one other one another object which is going to be a child right so we would have a name of child uh, xyz right xyz and age is going to be like uh, i'll say 2 years old child we have okay and now so see we have address property in parent right name property in parent so if i'll simply do uh, if i'll go here and if i'll do parent dot name it will print the name of parent if i'll do child dot name it will print the name of child okay if i'll do parent dot address it will print the address of uh, parent okay you can see but now what i want from the child object is like i want to access something like this console dot log i want to access the address but right now we don't have any property defined in child object right like address property is not defined in child object so what i want from child is like if the address property is available in child it will print the address from here right if it is not available i want the child object prototype to refer to the parent right so basically i am going to attach a prototype in child so that if the address property is not found here in child object it is going to take the address from the parent okay so how we are going to do that so right now if i do child dot address i'll get undefined right i'm getting undefined so basically what i'll do i'll create this object in a different way so we have something called object dot create right 
we have something called object dot create. So what this object dot create will do? So basically, object dot create it is a method, right? That allows you to create a new object with a specified prototype. Means we are going to specify the prototype here. We are going to create a new object, but we are going to specify a prototype. So what I'll do? I'll simply give parent here, right? And then if I'll do child dot name equal to x y z and child dot age equal to twenty six or maybe two years. And if I'll try to access child dot address. what it will do basically you can see we have uk india it is getting the address from parent right if i'll try to access name it will print x y z you can see and if we don't have a particular property inside the child object it will print the name abc you can see so how it is working see this is called prototypal inheritance so right now we have child dot age and child dot name so right now i'm explaining you the functionality of object dot create it is basically specifying the prototype for child object right so right now what we have inside child we have name and age name is mahavir singh age is 2 okay then from where it is getting this address if i am printing address it is getting address from the parent how because i have yeah here in prototype i have attached another object where we have name and address that that means the prototype of child is now set to parent right so first it will look into the child object if i am trying to access the address it will look into the child object if address is present here then that is fine if it is not present here it will go to the prototype right it will go to the prototype and it will check if the address is present in the prototype okay and that is present that is present in the prototype so it is getting the address from here right if i am trying to print name so first it will look into the child object itself if the name property is present in the child object it will print this if the name is not present here it will go to the parent uh, it will go to the prototype and check if the name property is present in the prototype and so on like if it is not present here it will again go to this prototype so this is called prototypal inheritance means it will keep looking for the particular uh, key if it is present in the current object that is fine if, if it is not it will go to the prototype of that uh, particular object and then so on until the prototype is not null so here we don't have prototype right so if i simply say we have child right child dot prototype Uh, sorry child underscore underscore proto what we are getting underscore in underscore underscore proto name and address right and if i'll again do dot underscore underscore proto underscore underscore i'll get another object where we have all the properties constructor function has on methods you can see two string methods is here right and if i'll do it one more time so it will give me undefined or null sorry it will give me null because we don't have any prototype inside it now right so this is called prototypal inheritance it will keep looking until it finds that value okay so now let's uh, get to our original example like what are the main use cases of it right so let's say guys i want to create a user here right where uh, user will basically contains name i have this name okay and then i have the age of 27 okay so and this is perfect perfectly fine right i have created one object with name and age property and it will simply print this so this is simple okay so now odds are in our application so let's say we'll need to create a more than one user so how we can do this so let's say we want to create 100 of users right so we are not going to create a user something like this user 2 user 3 user 4 right we are not going to create a users like this so then what we are going to do 
so in that case we will need to create more than one user so naturally the next step for this would be to encapsulate that logic inside of a function right that we can basically invoke whenever we needed to create a new user right so basically what i mean to say let's say we want to create a user right so what we we will in encapsulate that here so let's say i'll say user right this user function will take name and age and here i'll simply create a user this is how we create a empty user right and i'll set user dot name here to name whatever we are getting here from here and user dot age equal to age right and in the last line we can simply then return to the user uh, return the user object okay so now the logic is encapsulated inside a function whenever we need to create a multiple user what we can simply do is const user equal to user and i'll pass the name here mahavir 26 this will give me the user right and let's say we want to create multiple user we can do do this something like this a b c 1 2 3 right so logic is encapsulated here right so if i'll simply do user it will give me mahavir and h6 if i'll do user one will uh, give me another user user 2 user 3 something like this like we have encapsulated the logic okay okay so now there is one problem with this logic and what it can be so let's say i want to create a one function that function is print name okay and it is going to be a function which will basically simply console.log this dot name right uh, it, it will simply print the name here okay and i want to create one more function that is print age and it will simply print the age right so if i'll do user dot print name print age it will get me 26 right if i'll do user 1 you can see it it is getting it is giving me different age right you can see the logic is encapsulated but the only problem here is like what we are doing here if i'll simply say user user 1 or user 2 let's keep it till 2 here you have you can see we have all the objects here like we have the user one object and what we have here is two methods inside it again we have another object and again we have two methods inside it see so why why weakness here because we can see we have the same methods here right like these methods are generic and dynamic so every time we are creating a, a user it is creating uh, extra memory for these methods even the logic is same right okay this name is dynamic age is dynamic but this print name and print age this here the same logic they are generic methods right but still they are taking lot of memories because every time we are creating the object it is attaching the methods inside that object right so what we can do like instead of uh, creating methods like this we can create a separate object here uh, let's say I'll create a separate object here user methods and I'll move this part here so I'll say print name print age and this is going to be a method this is going to be an object like this right so now what we will do like instead of this function we can simply reference to this user methods dot print name okay print age yeah you can see although it is doing the same thing you can see we still have the print name print age method inside both the objects but now what is happening these print name and print age methods are being created once okay we are creating these methods only once and 
we are accessing accessing it through the references right we are not creating a separate memory each time we are creating an object we are not creating a separate memory for print name and printage method right instead we are referencing to a same memory locations means these two methods are created once we are simply referencing to sim referencing to the same memory locations right so this way like we can optimize our memory okay again so like we have one more problem here right i know you understood this but now we have one more problems so let's say i want to create one more function here right say hello so what we have to do let's say i'll say i'll create one more function say hello right and it will simply say uh, maybe something like this hello and it will print the name okay so i've created a function method here inside the user method objects now i need to attach it here also i need to reference it to inside my user object right something like this so now you can see one more method let me console only one user for better understanding now you can see we have one more method right and if i'll do user dot say hello it will simply say hello mahavir right so what like what is the problem here Pro basically problem is like whenever we are creating a new method here we need to create a method here also and if we forgot to create a method here or maybe we forgot to attach it here it will lead us to a bug right so like we need to remember every time whenever we are creating a method here we, we also need to attach it to here so that is the biggest problem so how we can solve this problem so like in the starting of this video i uh, like we learned about object dot create right that is basically used to you know attach a prototype uh, in an object right what was object dot create this math that basically allows us to uh, specify the prototype right so how we can do like we are creating a user here right what we can do we can say object dot create and we we can simply pass the user methods here now we don't need to write this code why because now we are creating a user object we have name and age methods here and all these methods we are setting in the prototype of the user so basically what we are saying if this method like print name print age say hello is not present in the user object look into the user method objects right and it will print all the user methods from here then so let's see now you can see inside user now we have only age and name but if we open the prototype of it we can see we still have all the methods right so this way we can solve the problem of uh, creating a methods in a separate files and then attaching it to the user functions right this is more convenient me and if i still do uh, user dot say hello it will work same you can see hello mahavir right so this is the one way of creating object we are setting it in the prototype now there is one more neat and clean way to create a dynamic users using a constructor functions right so like whenever you create a construction functions the first letter of the function name should be capitalized that we have already done so how we invoke the constructor function we simply invoke the constructor constructor function through new keyword right and what it will do basically whenever we will invoke a function with new keyword it will create an empty object for us this is the first thing it will do and then it will return return that empty object right and how it is doing uh, behind the scene so if you have not seen my call bind and apply a video like i have explained about this keyword so please go and watch that video that is very very important because then only you will understand this concept here so what it is doing basically see if i'll simply console.log this keyword here right and let me uh, yeah i let's not create it as a constructor function right now i'm simply calling this function as a normal function okay what is this keyword here it is a window object is a window object so now 
like with new keyboard what we are saying bind like basically change the binding of this keyword to an empty object right and now if i like once i am invoking the function with new keyword you can see now it is binded to the user object okay so now what we need to do we don't need to do this these things we don't need to do now what i will simply do is this dot name this dot age even i don't need to return it like constructor function will automatically do that for us okay constructor function will automatically do that for us and even i don't need this so now if i print the user i'll still get you can see i'm getting the user object with name and email right and if i'll again instantiate this with new keyword i'll get user one as a a and age one user one name is a a and age is one but if i'll try to access say hello now it will say say hello is not a function you can see say hello is not a function so what we can do now see like here comes the use case of prototype right what is prototype here every method in javascript has a prototype property right let me pr prove that to you if i'll simply do this is the method name right user dot prototype it will give me the constructor function and the other properties right so what we can do now instead of creating a separate object we can attach all the methods in the prototype of that function how we can do that what we are saying like user dot prototype dot print name right what is the name of our function print name we are simply going to copy paste this and we don't need this extra object now right i'm going to say print age it will print the age and here i will say say hello and it will simply say hello this dot name right and if i'll try to access uh, user dot say hello now it should work you can see hello mahavir if i do user one dot say hello it is still working because now what i'm saying is if i'll simply print user here inside the prototype we have attached all our function through the prototype property right so this is about prototype guys like we have learned what is prototype right we have learned prototype like main use cases of prototype is for inheritance if some property is not found in the object it will keep looking into the parent parent hierarchy right so like i have uh, taught you the different ways of creating our objects like we can create it through object dot literal we have object dot create which basically used to specify the prototype of that particular object we have a one more method like object dot assign constructor functions now you know right constructor function is basically it changes the binding of this keyword and it will it is a it is a kind of factory for creating a object right that's why we call it a constructor function because it helps helps us to create a helps us to construct a object right then we have prototype inheritance prototype inheritance i told you in my uh, like in starting of the video if something is not found in the particular object it will keep looking into the uh, hierarchy right it will check the parent prototype and then prototype of the parent again until it finds the property that is called prototype prototype inheritance object dot create we already know so what are the benefits of prototype benefits is like it is used for if i'll go here and i'll show you what are the benefits of prototype the first thing is memory less memory uses right like uh, earlier what we were doing we were defining all the functions here right on for for every instantiation of the function the memory was getting created for each and every functions but now what we have do we have simply attached it to the prototype of that particular function right so we are we are saving a lo lot of memory here right that is the one thing right it is used for memory saving another thing is inheritance inheritance right like we if we if we are trying to inherit some properties from the parent object right 
so that is called inheritance so again inheritance is very very important so this is all about prototype guys if you understood this well please uh, smash that thumbs up button don't forget to subscribe so again thanks for watching guys uh, bye bye take care